And we are back. This is a special episode today of a Hero's Journey podcast. Um, and this one is actually brought to you by SMP Inc. Inc. SMP Inc. Here in Las Vegas. Let them rebuild your confidence. And I'm hoping they're going to rebuild mine here real soon. But uh, I'm, I'm dead serious. Um, so here's the thing. Um, today is special. And it's because it's this is a combo kind of thing. Uh, I get asked all the time, what is a hero's journey podcast? And it's a reminder that you are the hero of your own story. And this space for me, I'm at Sticky Paws Studios in Las Vegas, and I have navigated my way into this new adventure that's going on in my life. And I kind of had to find my way through this through friends. And I'm actually sitting next to a friend of mine right now who's been doing this a lot longer than I have. I've been helping him out for a while now, and I'm excited to have him back. He, I think he was on episode four. So my name is Brian Hopkins. This is a Hero's Journey podcast. And my guest to my left is a guy named J.P. Pierce from DadCast. Hello, sir. How How's you it doing, going buddy? today, Welcome. man? Welcome back to Vegas. Here's the thing. It's so crazy to me because, dude, you, you visit Vegas like, once a month. <laughs> well, if you, we want to get real here, the month of July, which we are still in, sixth time I've been here this month. Oh, jeez, dude. <laughs> like, I live where you're from, uh -huh. and I visit there once every couple of years. Correct. And I have family there. so uh, I've spent more time in Vegas this month than I have at home. I think most of the time that I'm actually talking to you, you are... I'm hearing ching, ching yeah, you know, yeah. and going on. And that didn't da -da 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 -da, happen earlier. Just all kinds of <laughs> yeah, totally crazy did. stuff. But uh, we brought some friends today. We um, did. Today was, today was one of those things where I wanted to just kind of blend the two worlds together, DadCast and a Hero's Journey podcast, and share the stories. Because it's about, you know, for me, this is navigating a new space. But then things that come easy to people sometimes are not you have to work at it to get what you want mm -hmm. and uh, in anything but in certain cases like our guest today um, I'm looking right at you right now Mr. Die Richard everybody say hello how you doing guys nice yeah. to see you thank you for having me <laughs> um, Die is you're a talented dude oh, we, cheers. we met what I paid him for that five years ago I think we met five years ago yeah that's right you were in Tenors of Rock. I was uh, yeah. one of the founding members of Tenors of Rock that was a headlining show here in Vegas, and that's how we met with your concert. Yes, we did it. We did. Well, no, it was our concert. Yeah, your concert. Yeah. <laughs> no, our. Uh, our all of us. Yes, collectively. We, we yeah. Exact. Collectively, because I walked up and I was in awe of Soundcheck. Uh, mm -hmm. At Soundcheck, I think it was the day before. Yeah. I was watching you guys and just went, listen to the sound coming out of these five guys. This is insane. And I can't understand a single word they're saying. <laughs> because you're, you're not welcome. obviously born here, bro. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, it, what's really cool is I'm going to, real quick, I want you to introduce your friend. Absolutely. Um, over here, we have the pleasure and honor to be hanging out with our friend, Mr. Jesse Dugas. Now he's how are we doing? He's our production guy, helping out with Dadcast. He is an SEO specialist. Um, basically, um, as you like to call one of the guys that work here at Sticky Paws Studios, he is our chief nerd. Okay. He does all the behind the scenes things that really help grow our social media, um, our podcast, and our online presence. And he is knocking it out of the park, man. And we brought him along to this trip to Vegas to, A, experience Vegas, and C, have him check out this amazing setup here you at Sticky Boss. You skipped B. B. So Did I? Yeah, you said well, A and then C. C, so. and, then, and then also two. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just, I just pointed out that, wait a minute, I am paying attention. Right. I didn't get much sleep last night. Okay. It is Vegas, mind you. This is true. And the great thing about Jesse here, this is legitimately your first time in Vegas, because the last time he was here, you were how old? I was 12 the last time I was oh, here. Oh, wow. So you that were doesn't hanging count. Out at that the, doesn't right. count. He was hanging yeah. out at the m m store. Yeah. 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 Uh, but today, he's he's not the chief nerd, which is, which is Travis. He's not Chase, he's, right? He, who is the voice here. He's not Austin, who I can't remember what we call Austin around here. The loser. The, <laughs> 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 but we have George, the teacher. Running the show. What's up, yeah. people? Yeah, buddy. Yo, let's go. 
I, I have so much watching, so much fun watching your podcast. And I just flew in today too, so I feel like I'm losing every other word as right? I speak. It, it, today it's so weird. It is strange, and, and you know, I don't want. I just I don't know when you're planning on talking about this, but again, it's a discussion. It's a roundtable. Right. Um, Jesse, most importantly, by the way, is a dad. There we go. Right. He is a dad, so we are going to discuss a little bit about that. Um, but there's an elephant in the room. Nick, once again, my co-host on DadCast, was supposed to be here today. Yes. And he was here today. He actually was in Vegas with us. But um, without getting into too much detail, um, he wasn't feeling well, and he needed to catch a flight back home ASAP. He wanted to see this beautiful room. Yes, he did. He, he wanted to sit down and share his story with Di. Yeah. Right. And and their similarities of what you guys have, have gone through. And he's not here. So Jesse's here, and I'm going to get to learn a little bit about you, and so are you out there as well. Um, You're going to love his story, man. I can't wait to tell you something. Well, but. you know what? Here, here's the thing, too. Um, I want to get. I want to continue right here. For starters, dude, where are you from? I'm from Cardiff in Wales. Which wait, uh, what? wait, what? I know. I need. <laughs> I, I literally am going to need this translated. Like, can George, I leave? Can I leave now? <laughs> George is going to be back there going. What did he say? Shut up. Say cardigan. What was yeah. that? Yeah. Say again. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't speak American. So <laughs> the English uh, I'm from Cardiff, which is a city in Wales, uh, which isn't spelt with an H. Um, it's a country. And it's in the UK. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that explains why he's got his beautiful wife. Dude, it's that accent. It's the, the blue accent. eyes. There's nothing else. There's nothing yeah, else. You oh, know. thanks, baby. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'll take the compliment. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a true story. <laughs> She's fed up at me now, but no, I'm joking. You, you know what's, what's crazy is over here in the corner, I'm looking. That's the show we, that's we it, met. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's the and one. you're in that shot. You're actually right behind me. I was me. right behind you. You know, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, that With great. your crew. I, I think I turned and handed you guys a mic. Yeah. And everybody was singing with me. Yeah, we learned your song. Yeah, songs. no, I remember yeah. that. No, that was great. That was an amazing thing. That was the, we had just moved to Vegas 2016 in November, and we opened our show January in 2017. And then, what was it, a few months later? You know, right. literally later that year, that all happened. And it really did galvanize the city. It was such a strange thing to go through. Yeah. And um, I don't think we've looked back since, I think, as a city, personally. Wow. I think it's grown and grown from there. It's it's been strange until the pandemic, but you know it was, yeah, it was a weird, weird night. Yeah, it was. Mm. Off topic, we won't, we won't we go. Yeah, we won't get. That's get a in, whole other podcast. We won't get into that one. one and why, but um, you know, he's referring to the shooting here. If you're listening at at home, um, or you know, it's it's one of those things where October one here in Las Vegas was a, a 2017 brought the city together, and there was just so much tragedy and um and that night we tried to turn something when was that when did we do that that was november 4th it was later yeah another month yeah later. it was okay. it was just like a month later yeah and so we've been yeah it's, since, it's then, come, yeah, yeah, since then yeah since, since then which is really cool it's been a blessing um here's the thing you're you're married now i am yeah and it's your anniversary was yesterday it was yesterday four years yesterday what? happy anniversary green I card baby saw that uh, <laughs> 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 you were working on your anniversary. I was, yes, I was yeah. last night. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's why he asked me to sing. I was like, no, no, I don't, I don't sing unless I'm getting paid these days. Can't yeah, do it. oh, can't do it. <laughs> Too tired. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. We played last night till about uh, one o'clock in the morning, and then yeah, it was a good night. It was good fun. It was yeah. good fun. It was a big. Uh, it's, it's funny how it works with those kind of venues. If there's a big act playing, at, uh, the Lumineers were playing at the Garden Arena. So once that emptied out. It oh. fills the venue that we're in, so it's oh, wow. uh, it's, it's good fun. It's so good fun. where were you? We were at a place called Level Up inside of MGM Grand. Okay, last and night. and you were with your band, my band original, original Chaos. Yeah, very good. And uh, to stay on topic mm -hmm. with this right now, um, I heard. I think I heard when I stepped out of the room that are you putting out original music? Yeah. So we started during the pandemic. I was like we said earlier, I was in ten as a rock for twelve years. Um, and the pandem pandemic hit, that hasn't really come back. So I was looking forward to doing something else. It was time to try other things. So I put this band together during the pandemic. And since then, we've gone from a gig or two a week to playing 10, 11 venues across town. 
and we just won best cover band from Las Vegas Weekly magazine. Oh, thank nice you. Nice job, dude. All the songs we don't write. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we're, we're just finishing up our first single, which will be out hopefully in a couple of weeks. We're gonna, we're gonna put the fi finishing touches on it and get oh, it out, good. which will be fun. It'll good be fun to you. get something, something new out there. Want to throw a shout out to your bandmates and. Uh Nah, not really. No. Uh, <laughs> hey, boys. How's it going? Yeah, no, it's Andrew Deesno plays bass and sings with me, and Chris Giacchino, who was uh, in Rock of Ages on Broadway, the tour. He's my guitar player. And uh, we've got a plethora of drummers at the moment that we're going through. So Tim and, and Anthony and other boys who have played, they've all been great. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been really good. It's going well. It's, it's a lot of work. We do play outside a lot, which is exhausting in this heat right. at this time of year. It can be very difficult. But, yeah, it's been great. And, um, yeah, we've, we've, we've really... I think we've grown quite a lot in 18 months and I'm excited to see where else we can go, you know? Good for you. Thank you. No, yeah, it's been good fun. It's been good, good for fun. you. It's a different arena away from the production shows that I was so used to. It's a whole new kind of entertainment circle of people who have been doing it for a very long time. And they're all really good too. So it's finding your hole to fit in between without taking too much work off of other people. You know what I mean? It's a right. difficult puzzle to fit yourself into nicely so it has taken a minute but i think we're getting our groove now and i, well, I think we're, we're fitting in there if you're at home this guy's a badass you really are man no, thank you very I much i appreciate been, it uh, i make it up man i don't know i just close my eyes and see what happens but no, it seems to work it's been fun <laughs> I, I get to follow you i follow you i get to see you i popped in watched you do your thing for a while now and the, and like i said the night that we shared the stage i was just blown that was away. great it was beautiful and, and i've come to see tennis of rock mm -hmm. a handful of times and uh just I was explaining to somebody what kind of show that was, and then now you're doing this thing, and it was fun. It was it was a great. It was a band. We had five lead singers, and uh, we had a band behind us, and we were all uh, previously in in musical theatre, and we were all actors, and um, we just wanted to do something for ourselves, and we ended up touring. Very lucky, we went all around the world and didn't have to pay you for any of it, which was great. And we were actually in Asia at the time. We were in uh, Manila playing the Resorts World Casino over there, and we got an offer from Caesars Entertainment to come here and we couldn't turn that down and we did nearly a thousand shows here as a wow. headliner and then the pandemic hit and we closed and mm. it was time to do something else and it's fun. everyone's grown you know you got to move on and, and it was never going to last forever but it was it was a lot of fun we had a lot of fun doing it for sure good for you man a lot of fun uh, so as I mentioned at home uh, I have a co-host today and he's usually running his own show because um, Nick's pretty quiet <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So with that voice, JP, how can you not? Yeah, he is. And, and I've been doing my best to. And we did a podcast the other day, and he actually talked over me. Whoa! And and kind of trampled me, and I was just. Yeah. I was. I was. I was very pleased. <laughs> I was very happy for him. Um, so he's getting much better. Well, but but yes, I I do tend to talk more. To take it to you know like a, the journey of each one of us that has a, has our own you know, the new direction, new adventure kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you search for people around you who can teach you the, the, this, right. like a mentor kind of thing. So you're basically mentoring Nick, but that it's dude trial hustles. trial by fire. Oh, yeah. He does all the work behind the scenes, he man. Hustles. He hustles. He and he's... I think all that hustling, though, is may play a part in why he's not feeling too good and had to go home. Right. So maybe slow that hustle down a bit, Nick. Okay? <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit, but anyway, I got this. So, all right. So, for everyone who's not aware, Dadcast is a podcast that you know we center on the, the dad life. You know, the adventures, the path, the, the the everything in between about being a dad, and you know everything that comes along with it. Now, we don't always stay centered on being dads, but we try to you know make that the topic. You, sir, have a pretty unique perspective on that now before i get into the details and share that and hear that story from you um i just heard off the air that you are about to have a baby i am in nine weeks time and yeah. is that your first my first baby yes, okay sir. so your unique perspective on this and nick this was supposed to be you buddy <laughs> this was supposed to be you um it would just work so much better because he's went through it so mm -hmm. you tell us about the journey and how it's been different for you versus a Jesse Dugas or a Brian Hopkins or a J.P. Pierce who take the normal path mm -hmm. in having children. Lucky you. Um, 
a lot cheaper than the way we had to do it. But no, I, it's, uh, I went through <laughs> IVF. So um, yes. my wife and I, we started trying for a baby back in early 2021. And like everyone, you have, you know, you think you're going to give it a year. You're going to give it that natural time because it's all about timing. It's all about, it's pretty difficult to get pregnant when you know the numbers, which I do now way more than I right. did before. And for everyone who doesn't know, what mm. is IVF? Yes. So it's uh, in vitro uh, fertilization. So it's, um, they'll, you'll take sperm and the embryo and they'll, you'll do it in a lab and it's all done scientifically. So I am the one who has the issues. I have uh, low mobility and low sperm count. It's all the tight genes and singing high probably. <laughs> To be honest, it's, <laughs> you can laugh. It's okay. I'm I'm over it now. I, want, I, I wanted to laugh, but I more it's than facts. welcome to. You're probably more than welcome those to. Those skinny jeans, man. Yeah. I've been telling about a year ago. Years, I no. would I would have cried over it, but now I'm I'm okay to joke about it. You're fine. Yeah. So uh, we uh, were trying, and when we came back from our um, honeymoon, we talked for a while about, you know, I'm 35, I was 34 then. It's just like, well, let's just get tested. It seems the sensible thing. With that, there comes so much panic. I think as a man because. There's this weird, you know, st stigma that it's it's emasculating to to not work or to whatever. And when you 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 go and get a, a a physical or anything, they test you for everything. So you don't know if there's something else wrong. Your cholesterol's high, which it is. Um, you know, all the other things that come with them taking 14 vials of blood and they test you for everything. So it was a lot riding on it, and they also tested my wife to see if there's anything wrong with the, the way she works too. So when the report came back, um, it's this, you know, overcomplicated email that's got hundreds of numbers on it. And you don't really know what you're looking at. All I noticed was that the majority of things were red. So I was like, well, that can't be great. And I was just looking for the sperm count, looking for the sperm count. And it was it came out at 16.9 million per milliliter. So when you look that up, it's just a little bit under normal, which you go, OK, that's not that bad with right, a bit of right. help. There's drugs, you, it's something called Clomid you can take that helps, um, you know, the, the mobility of the sperm, etc. So, it, you know, that that's where our journey started. So immediately, this is why I want to talk about it more, is that I felt guilt. It, it, it covered me. And, you know, my wife luckily was healthy and she's been incredible. I wouldn't have been able to do any of it without her. Immediately, she helped me start seeing. And it did take me a while, but it's very much our thing that we're going through together as a partner she said to me this morning, I wanted to have a baby with you. I wanted to be parents with you, not anyone else, with you. So we'll go through what we got to get through to get there. So then um, it was a case of going in and going to the fertility clinic and finding out what the possibilities are. So next you do something called an IUI where they'll take your sperm, clean it, and kind of drop it further up. Because he explained to me, the, 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 the fertility doctor, that if you put it in human terms... It, the sperm has to travel from America to London across the Atlantic if I was to swim. Right. Wow. So that's how far they've yeah. got to go. It's a long, long journey wow. for them. And you need millions to get as close as you can to the egg. It's something around, if I'm wrong in the numbers, I apologize. But I think I remember them telling me you need around five million around the egg to get one in. Mm -hmm. So at the time, I was like, okay, I've got a decent number around average. So then when we do something called an IUI, I go in and do my donation again. Donation, like I'm giving money to someone. Right. Um, <laughs> that's a whole other thing, but we'll get to that later. But you... you George you, does you, that all the time. Oh, Sorry, nice George. the teacher, yeah. Lucky you, man. It's fun. <laughs> it could be fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so you go in and uh, I do it the day before and we come in, they prep my wife and, and what's odd about it is, and it's just the way they do it, they tell you the number that they tested as it's about to happen. So mm -hmm. wife's in stirrups and they're getting the things together. Like it's, it's not, and they told me it's 900,000 per milliliter. So I dropped oh, 15 wow. and a half million. And this is after taking the steps so, to increase. So I had 16 point whatever, 1 million it was, but 15 million of them, or 14 and a half million of them wow. were no good. Hmm. So you're there, you're excited to go, well, this, maybe we could be pregnant. We could be pregnant in six days. And then all of a sudden you're like, I, uh, what's right. the point of even doing this? This version of IVF, you know, this right. is the start of. That's not technically IVF. Are but you it's having to pay for for this? Oh yeah, journey. This one time, you're. This is costing you. Uh, we've probably, I think, with everything overall, I'd say it's probably topped over thirty thousand dollars so far, for sure. Mm. Oh my gosh, I yeah. Yeah. and I'm a singer, so I don't exactly make that much money, e ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, uh, <laughs> kids not even close to college yet either. Grief. I saw a post. 
and you had needles like was around the photo. Around yeah, yeah. The, yeah, around the I didn't photo. have to do those. It's my, this, this is what's okay, continue. I'm excruciating. Sorry, no, no, no. It's fine. And, and interrupt me whenever you want, yeah. of course. So you do that and it's it's gutting. You sit there and, and I again you feel like I'm letting her down. And with everything that's going on with mental health and, and as a man in terms of our world, we don't talk about it enough. It's the same back home. It's worse back home. British guys, I don't know if you watch UFC, but Paddy the Baddy was on the mic the other night saying, we need to talk to people. If you've got a problem, say something. There's nothing wrong with right. being emotional or, or anything like that. But at the time, I, it was just embarrassing. I just kept apologizing to my wife, kept apologizing, kept apologizing. And she's like, it's not your fault. But I was like, it is. It is my fault. That's how it felt. It's not, but it, it did at the time. So that obviously didn't work. So the doctor was like, well, we should do another one. I was on Clomid, which was meant to improve my numbers. And they went up about 200,000, did it again, didn't work. And then it really started to feel like, is this ever going to work? Is this, is this, you know, have I got to start thinking about adoption? Have I got to start, which I'm all for, but it's a whole other yeah. process to, to which you'd be able to comment. You know, it's a whole other thing to, to think about, a whole other expense, a whole other world that you've got to go into. And... Um, we were with the Nevada Fertility Clinic. His Dr. Falk is the doctor who's helped us. He's been fantastic. And he sat us down and said, listen, what's going on with you is I make enough uh, testosterone. I don't have any, I didn't need to do TRT or anything like that. But it, I make more in the brain that where, where it gets developed. For some, for some reason, down in the factory, it's not transferring into to, to helping the sperm do what they got to do. So the, there's only a couple of options. You can either have an accident when you were young, something can happen to your test or something. And so there's no reason for it. There's not my diet. There's not any, any issues. I've, I've never drunk right. too much or done drugs or anything like that. You know, it's not like I've had any issues like that right. where it would affect that. So it's just a bit clueless. You're just like, well, it's helpless. It's just how I am. So then we decided, then he said, well, you know, I really think IVF could work because you do have sperm that work. You just don't have enough to do it naturally. So then it was a case we had to do something called an egg retrieval. So that's when my wife starts going on all these needles you saw. That's ah. just the first. That's just the set. Yeah. That was just one go. What you saw around that photo was Are you just serious? one try. It's, it's, it's tens and hundreds of them. It's so much. And as the husband, <laughs> the one who technically is my fault for doing it, I can't do anything. I just got to sit there and go in and jack off and and give it to them in a cup and wow. and, and, and that's it you know that's all you so do. here's like another batch of guilt and it's you know it, it, i don't know if any of you ever ever done that or donated it's 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 not an experience you think it's going to be you know no. it, it's it's not fun come on anyway no. you really you know you be you know you went in and the room i went in was the size of this table there was like a low ikea sofa that had a puppy pee pad on it to sit on because wow. it's leather, and it, you know, you know, imagine this as you go in there uh -huh. to go and make love to your right hand, and you're sitting on this <laughs> pee pad, and then it's really low. So I'm sitting there, and the screen was above me, and my immediate thought was, I've never masturbated and looked up before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that. All these are inappropriate thoughts kept coming to my mind when I was going concentrate. You got to, you know, do a yeah. job here. <laughs> so then you're looking through and you put the headphones on. You need on. your best swimmers too, man. But you got to do all this stuff and you got to concentrate. Like, like whenever do you concentrate to do that? It, whatever. yeah. Uh, but then you're doing it, and my brain, me being me, was thinking, a yard away is the reception. With right. three women who I see constantly. Right. Yep. How, much no. this, how much of this can I hear? Right. So like, do you, do you go for gold? <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you, you know, put, put the high octane gas in and right. give it a good go? Or do you try and keep it quiet like your mum and dad are going to knock the door? <laughs> Hi, mum and dad. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, do you, do you, what do you do? Right. So, so, and then you've got you to finish in the cup and you've got to, oh, it, oh, it, none of it is enjoyable. At all. So I did that like four or five times over the whole okay, process. Back up. So which Please did do. you go with? Did you go with the... Like, right or left? Right, I'm right. <laughs> no, but did you go with this, uh, the parents you're watching or did I you went go for it. Gold? I'm paying money. I'm here. I'm doing it. <laughs> right. okay. Yeah, good for you. Came out sweaty. Hi, right, girls. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good God. So after all that, she started doing... Um, uh, the, the next process, next step in the process is the egg retrieval. So luckily she works. So she ovulates on time. She creates eggs. Perfect. So what they do is they give her a series of drugs to overstimulate the follicles. The follicles, they look like, when you have a scan, they look like little holes 
and that's where the each egg grows. Wow. So normally you get like two or three a month. Mm -hmm. She did the drugs and uh, got 40, 40 follicles, which is a lot. And it, the, the, the drugs we started was the day before, so July 3rd, July 2nd, around 2021, we were in hospital all day July 4th because her body worked so well, it overstimulated, and she had like these severe growing pains coming from her stuff. She was doubled over. My wife's amazing with pain, but it was, it was painful to watch. I, was like, I don't know. We, we panicked and thought that it wasn't working. So um, immediately you're like, well, this is not gonna work. So her body's rejecting it or it's, it's not doing what it's meant to do. Luckily, we, you know, we spent nine hours in the hospital and they didn't really do anything. And at the time it was still more pandemic. So it was, they wouldn't let me go back with her. She was screaming and I was like, just let me go back. So like we're in the middle of IVF. It was like, just let me go back and be with her so I can calm her down. Um, so, Luckily, we went to our doctor again. It's fine. Your body's done exactly what it needs to do. It's it's a perfect. It's a great number. Forty to forty five is great because ultimately you're going to lose some on the way down. You know, because the, the amount of testing they do to these things, it's incredible what they find out with these eggs and everything. it's amazing. They test them. We had them tested for the sex, um, any kind of diseases, so they can get rid of those. We had them tested for Down syndrome, wow. so they can get rid of. So not to get rid of them, but it's like it's not. Fit. No, you know, they use the healthy yeah, eggs, yes, the embryos. For sure. So she got, I, I did get it written down, so I don't get it wrong. She got 40 follicles, 30 of them were eggs. Then they, uh, 25 of them mature, so they're the ones that can be fertilized. So then 25 of those were mature and fertilized with my sperm. 15 of those actually fertilized and took. Then the next uh, stage is blastosis, where it, it, they have to survive a certain amount of days, and they're still growing. Um, and then they freeze them. So we had eight that reached that. Two of them were abnormal, so we had to lose those two, but then we got um, four girls and two boys. So we were left with four girls and two boys in the freezer. Okay. So then we had to move to the next step, which was preparing her for finding out when she ovulated. So it was, it's not guesswork. It's about 120 hours worth of uh, progesterone she had to take, which was constantly doing two or three injections every single day. Oh, jeez. Her ass looked like a colander by the end of it, like the blood oh. and bruises. And, and you're sitting there helpless going, Yeah. Sorry, sweetheart. I, I did it once and I did it too hard. So she had to, she did them all herself. Mm. Uh, I'm she's afraid an absolute, of needles. So. Absolute warrior, man. She's a warrior. My hero. Oh. Absolutely my hero. And um, so then. Uh, you got to shout out her name to Oh, everybody. Olivia. Olivia Richards. She was a dancer in town for years. Yes. She was in X Country, which is a show yep. at Harrah's. And. And uh, yeah, she's amazing, and I, I'd, she be, really is. I'd be lost without her. So thanks, babe. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's too much. Let's not make it too. You know, come on. Now. I'm sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> I'll cry. No. Um, so yeah. So at that point, we had we had four girls and two boys, and that was the first time it really felt. I remember the she FaceTimed me because she was learning to be. Uh, a, she went to cosmetology school after the pandemic. She's smart. Went and learned another another career, and she called me. It was the first time it felt in months that we had some good news for once. Because it was constantly, mm -hmm. something didn't work, something didn't work, the numbers were low, and it was just like we were losing all the time. Mm -hmm. So finally, it was like, oh, they worked. They've, that's that, that's going to be something when, when it grow, you know, if it's, if it's done correctly and it grows. So then in August, we went to do, the August of 2021, we went to do the first transfer, and we chose the boy. No reason, really. I, we just like, well, what should we try first? I was like, I quite like the idea of, I've got an older brother. He always, always looked after me, so I was like, well, maybe that would be nice. We'd have one of each kind of thing. So did that, and um, that's a whole other bunch of drugs. And, you know, she, when she ovulates, they go in, and you see the catheter go right up, and you just see this light, little tiny white spot at the end that's left, and that's what it is. They zoom in, and they can see that you can see the, um, the, the embryo, and they, they, clean, they clean it. They give it like a little shower, push it out, and they, they leave it uh, um, uh, as far up as it can go. And then you wait for six days. Wow. And they try to tell you, like, try not to do pregnancy tests because you can get false negatives, false positives. And what's really difficult, once you're going all through all this, all the money you're spending, all the, the emotional distress of not being able to do it naturally, not, you know, all that kind of stuff that you're dealing with, all of the symptoms of being pregnant are the same as a period. Like, Mother Nature's a... Can uh, I swear? Am I allowed to swear? Yes. Like, yeah. She's a bitch, right? Yeah. So... <laughs> So yeah. she was feeling these things, you know, like, is it a period or is she pregnant? And she right. thought she really thought she was, and you could notice some things and things start to grow and ache and hurt and all that kind of stuff. So she did a test and it was negative. Now, 
technically it still could have been positive, but at that point we started to sink. Yeah. And you attach yourself to this little of picture of an embryo, which is so small and it shows you what, what, what's going to be the placenta and where the actual body is going to come from. And you're just looking at this thing and you're like, did we let you down? Did we, you know, it, it's heartbreaking. And you're looking at every day going, please be in there, please be in there. And um, sadly, that boy didn't take and, and she wasn't pregnant, so she came on her period. And we had to, then when she had become on her period, we had to go into the fertility center. They'd still test you to see if mm -hmm. you're pregnant, even though we know we're not. So we're sitting there and like, oh, you, you looking forward to this? It's like, we already know she's not pregnant. So it's just like, and, and sadly, like the building's beautiful. They're all amazing. But you keep going to this place and it just, you, I associated it with negativity. Negative. Yeah. So it yeah. was really difficult to keep going there. And I hated going there at that point. I was like, I just don't want to be here. And it's like... Is this ever going to work? Like, is this is it you know pointless carrying on? And and it's and you, you feel like you're losing the battle, but you got to keep. And she kept building me up, kept picking me up from everything. And um, we took a month off after that. We I went home to Wales for the first time in three years because of the pandemic right. and everything. So I got to see my niece who was two I hadn't met yet. My my brother, my mother and father. I saw all my family, which was great. We needed that. So when we came back, is that right? We're going to go and do a, something called a mock transfer where they'll give her the same drugs, her lining will thicken, and then what they do then is they go in and scrape an inch of her lining out, which looked like the most painful thing. Uh. And that was a moment that I turned from saying sorry and started saying thank you. Right. That was a real moment for me. I, the coin flipped and I was like, this isn't my fault. It's just how I am. She's, she's going through everything for me. I, got, I owe her to, to let this go. And, and, and to be on the same page as her, because she needs me to be there for her. Because she hasn't even got pregnant yet. Right, right. We haven't even got to the nine, nine and a half months of pregnancy and everything that brings. We got to get there. This is, you know, it felt like the first trimester was 15 months long. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we did it and we found out that she was eight hours short of drugs. So that's why the first one didn't work. The timing was off. Because you have like a window of, again, I'm sorry if I get the numbers wrong, but I think it's believed three to five hours when the, the, the peak ovulation happens where the lining that it'll stick, the embryo will stick. We'd missed that by eight hours. So it was like, okay, great. It was positive. It was like, okay, okay. they're, they're yeah. healthy. The embryos are healthy. It wasn't the embryo's fault. So then we, what they do is they grade the embryo. Um, I think it's like AA, AB from um, successfulness of coming out of the freezer, being able to thaw. So the next, the next best one was a girl. I was like, let's have a girl. Let's go for it. Let's try it. So we knew the sex before it's a sex, you know, like, right. like not, to right. get into the, not to get into the abortion and anything like that, but it's like prior to it being a human, you find out what the, the DNA makes it yeah. up. So we had that and, and then she did it and then we didn't take a pregnancy test. We just stopped buying them. Smart move. Because they're not, you know, they're pretty, pretty accurate, but it's like, I don't want to look at another one of those right. things. I don't need to look at them anymore. So we didn't. So we did it and, and, uh, this time I felt like when you're watching it on the screen, I don't think I felt like I saw the embryo in the first one. And now I know exactly what I was looking at. I was like, there it is, I can see it. And it's a bright white spot. And I was like, okay, that made me feel good. Like I didn't feel like, I was like, it's not gonna go anywhere. How can it go anywhere? It's stuck, like how, where else can it go? It's gotta stay in there. So then a couple of days later, she started getting different symptoms she didn't get the first time. So it was like, mm -hmm. okay, these are, the, these are the pregnancy ones, right? And you, you really don't want to think it because you're like, oh, please work. Yeah. Please, yeah. I don't right. think I can do this. Again. Right. Please work. And then and we've got a different couple of symptoms. Your breast started to ache. Things started to hurt. And I was like, okay, she was like, should we do a test? And, I, and she was like, no, I don't want to do one. Let's not do it. Let's just keep doing our days as we are. And then she came out of school and she called me. She's bursting in tears. And immediately I thought something bad had happened. And she started to spot. Sorry, babe, you don't mind me telling this. Which doesn't happen no. to her. Right. And normally before a period, you don't get that. That's a, that's a, a yep. symptom of being pregnant. So immediately it was like, I'm getting shivers thinking about it. Yeah. It was, like, it was just like, oh, okay, okay. It's, I think this is gonna happen. And I've got a video, uh, I'll have to send it to you at some point. Yeah, do, please. We, we, we went in and we got tested. Still didn't do the test, but we were 99% positive that it, it had taken this time. And we've documented everything. So we've documented absolutely everything and I've got all the photos of her taking shots and I'm gonna put a big video together of explaining why we need to talk about this more. And we sat in our, in our living room and I, I put my phone up against the, the bottle or whatever and they called us 
And I was like, if this backfires, <laughs> yeah. and I've got this video on my phone, this is going to be awful to watch. But I, I, and as soon as the, woman, the lady uh, on the other end of the phone said, hi, guys, I was like, okay, we're pregnant. I could just tell from the tone of her voice. And me and my wife work so well together as a support team. I'm in a very emotional guy. I'll cry. I got no problem with saying that. I'm very yeah, open to too. letting my emotions out. Me I need too. to. Yep. Um, life's too hard to hold it all in. I, I can't do it. And but what what well, the way we work is if she gets upset, I I stiffen up, and I don't let it out. I will later on, but not right there in that moment. We can't. You can't both be. Right. Okay. I got to be there for her. She's gone through so much. The amount of hormones she's got through her body, extra than what she normally does. And she's healthy. She has the right amount of progesterone, estrogen, all that kind of stuff. She's got more there. So she's got so much going through her. I'm just there to be there for her. Hopefully that this is all successful. And then as soon as she said she was pregnant, it just came over us both. And we wow. were just both very emotional. Our dogs are right there going, what's going on? What are we doing? Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. so then, then the pregnancy starts. <laughs> so we yeah. finally arrived there. Okay. Uh -huh. oh, After all of that, you know. And how it, many months was that? that? That went on for how many months? When did we start? We started, that was January. So that second transfer was January. The first one we did in November. And we've been going to the clinic uh, we got. Fir I first got tested in March of 2021. Wow! So it's been since then we've been trying to get pregnant with the help of science. And and, and you are and we were trying six seven months prior to that. So you're having a little girl. Yes, we're having a little girl. Dude, yeah. congratulations! And it has come to fruition. Wow! You're yes, yeah, so. yeah. It turns out you throw thirty thousand dollars or something, it works. Well, in this case, <laughs> it was. And so what? With every penny. Right? With every it, penny. It, who cares how much? If anyone out price. there uh, is a photography agent or a modeling agent, she's going to be pretty cute. So if uh, <laughs> you need a baby for any kind of shoot, <laughs> she's, daddy's going to write a contract that she can't read. No. Yeah. And uh, I'll make that money back. <laughs> I was going to say, she's got to earn that money back. I'm right, she is. Yeah, I'm right, she's going to. The, no, the love. Jeez. But you even know. then, you know, the start of it, we have ex you have worries anyway when you get pregnant. We had the added pressure of everything we've already been through. Right. And you know you've got that first couple of months where it's, it's it, it can be, that's where you, you can lose a lot of, I mean, babies can get lost and you have miscarriages and everything. So we just had to keep going and luckily she's she's healthy and, and we had a scan literally a couple of hours ago and she's great. Oh, and, good. And she had Love a big, she had a, we could see her face and she did a big yawn for us and that was nice. And yeah, so I can't, yeah, so. I, I want to ask you two questions. Mm -hmm. Question number A. A. <laughs> Will you... In a couple months, mm -hmm. join myself and Nick via Zoom, most likely, on DadCast Solo to talk about that day. Oh, for sure. Okay. Absolutely. No, and happy. question three. Three. Is, <laughs> <laughs> if you can uh, give some advice to some guys out there who are going through what you are going through, have gone through, are mm -hmm. continuing to go through, who may be a little bit hesitant to talk about it because they're men. Well, that's the issue. Don't yeah. be. Okay. What advice do you give aside from just don't be? I mean, let's get a little bit deeper. Oh, what, for sure. What can we... I, I think for me, what was really difficult was was the guilt. It, it's it's uh, in the media or, or, or any kind of story or podcast, you seem to hear more stories about the 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 the, the mothers that don't work or for whatever it is, whatever reason. It is so common for a man. To, to have infertility issues. It's way more common than you think. And it's it's good to let know, everyone know that it's, it's not emasculating to go and get tested. It's not emasculating to have low sperm count. I've got it, I got a beautiful wife. It's never stopped me. It means I never had a child before, which is awesome, so that's good with all the mistakes, so that's great. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's talk about it, ask for advice. If anyone ever wants to find me on, I'm always open. I don't care if we're strangers. I'll talk to anybody about it. That's why I, I contacted Nick uh, originally. Yeah. Didn't know you guys were. Just saw a podcast and I was no like. No way. I saw you in Vegas. Like, just so you know, I'm, I'm going to be a new dad. I've been through IVF. I don't know if that's something you guys would want to talk about on and your it podcast. it turns out you guys know Nick, each other. Yeah. yeah. And then we ended up, and I said, oh, we come to Vegas. So I, yeah, Brian Hopkins manager. I was like, okay, this will be easy. We'll do this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's forgive yourself. And I have an ego like anyone else. I've been on stage since I was 18 performing. It was a difficult one to, to do. Right. And, you know, I, we told a lot of people before the first one, and it must be so tough for my parents and people who 
who watch to try and give advice because if you haven't been through it, how can you comment on it? Yeah. Right. Because ultimately you end up just saying, relax, calm down, take your time. Do you not think yeah. we're doing that? Yeah. yeah. And it's no having to go at anybody. Everybody did it. And it's like, we had to work out what we wanted to hear from people. And it was like, just listen to us. If you haven't been through it, you can't comment on it. But in yeah. reality, those people loved you. Oh, that's, that's why, all they wanted to that's do. That's why Absolutely. they were there for you. Absolutely. So. And, and it's funny what makes me smile now is people go, oh, you wait till you, you have the kid. I'm like, I'm ready for that. You're not. But it's no, okay. no, I know I'm not, but I'm ready for not being ready. There you go. Exactly. I've, I've yes. lost a lot of sleep in the last two years. Yeah. I've had my anxiety attacks and things like that. I'm like, trust me when I tell you it's the hardest job you are ever going to love, man. Mm -hmm. I even got a t-shirt that says that on it. But I'm it's, ready. You know, I, I, I am, and I know it's going to be a culture shock. I, I do. I, my brother's got three kids. The I've, best which, kind. I can't wait. And the fact that you have put yourself through so much. Mm -hmm. And fought with the with the the wife before she's even arrived yet. You've done much more than us average dads who have done it the old fashioned mm -hmm. way. I mean, you got a head start, in my opinion. Plus, you're older, yeah. and there's yeah. a, there's, an there's an appreciation there's an appreciation that you just uh, what you put yourself through, but then what you're actually gonna be experiencing how old were you when you had your kids <laughs> oh gosh um, you don't want me asking no i was 22 okay yeah so i'm 35 now exactly and I've, I've always known i've wanted a family from being young it's just something that i always felt I, I was very lucky my parents are amazing my brothers are made we've always been a really tight family so it's like oh, i want this this is nice and i know not everyone's lucky enough to do that i get i hate talking about it too much because not everyone gets to gets to do that right but I've always wanted it. And then in particular, once I got older, I've been ready to be a dad for years. And it's one thing not to ever, I'm terrible at accepting compliments and giving myself compliments. You ask anyone who knows me, the one thing they'll say is, he's gonna be a, he's gonna be a good dad. He's ready to be a dad. I go. love kids. Well, I love kids. Can you say that anymore? Yeah, I love kids. It, yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> you can. And, in the and correct way. Can. After um, hearing you speak today, dude, you're gonna, you're gonna crush this. Yeah, you oh, are. I can't wait. Um, I'm so excited. Your your passion, and and every it, the hair is standing up in my arms right now. Just thinking when you were talking, even mm. it's one of those things, man. That it just it's it's coming right out of you, and it's gonna you're just gonna love that. We've been girl so we've been so ingrained in this for so long. It's you know again, like I said, I I've, how one night stands get pregnant. I don't know. I don't understand. Like the, the 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 ingredients involved are so complicated, right? right? It's amazing. It's it's like there was a guy last night at the gig we played. I do this. Always make a joke. So if it's your birthday, happy birthday. If you're getting married, don't do it. But good luck. If you're getting divorced, congratulations. Make more money than the other person. And I'm nine weeks still have my baby. Blah blah. <laughs> and the guy said, uh, "Oh, I've I've got six kids." I was like, "Well, I, I said, well, I've had IVF. It would have cost me 180 grand to do that." So, thanks for rubbing it in. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so yeah, it's. It's. I was going to say, is there any anything you through that process that you'd want to know more about? Is there anything well, like before we ask that question and get over to Jesse? Yeah, of course. Sorry um, if I've hogged the no, 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 you man. Not. Remember, this yeah, today's this all, is all about, about you. you. Yeah. Um, Thanks. So, <laughs> I want you to just you know picture in that mind's eye of yours right now everything that you have been through, mm -hmm. and this is not a comparative or I'm better than you type story, but everything that you have just gone through, Nick. Decided to jump in and do it again. Okay. Nick went through all of that. Um, I, I, I'm not going to say, you know, exactly the same way. But Were his other kids natural? His, yes. Right. So he was, he had, you know, and Nick, man, I'm sorry. If you were here, brother, I would not have to be talking <laughs> for you. And, and that's okay. Uh, I talk with my hands. Um, he had five children oh, wow. the old-fashioned way. And then had a vasectomy. Mm-hmm. And years went by. And then he met his new lady. They got mm -hmm. married. She wanted kids. He got reversed. Turns out. How old is Nick? Nick is 44 okay. or 43. He's in his 40s. Um, if, you, if that's, again, Nick, if that's wrong, I apologize. <laughs> I'm saying I'm sorry way too much today to you. Um, I saw a lot so, of gray. I, I'd say yeah, probably. He had, <laughs> so they went through I'm all sorry, that. Nick. All the needles. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they finally got Liam. And then. Poor guy was born met right when the pandemic started. And he was in the NICU, not to freak you out or no, anything. No, it happens. It happens. But yeah. you know, it's 
it was very, very difficult for mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And now they're going through it again. But we are now at the point where the end of your story with the second time around Mm -hmm. with Nick and Danielle, where it's planted, I think they're... Two months in, yeah, I saw him post a picture yeah. of, of and the and the things day. are yeah. looking looking good. Great. Great. But there was some hiccups in the road um, on the second one as well, mm-hmm. and I was feeling it as you were explaining yours. It's the helplessness. Hit. It's yeah. the absolute, particularly if it's what women's bodies go through are, is insane. What they can get away with and don't get away, but what they can do men are useless there's no reason for us to be here like right? if we were going to have kids there'd be like three in the world that would right. be it. The, right. the earth would have been d- done many yeah. years ago the so pain it's, that they can sustain the it's incredible they're they're miracles it's no amazing joke, man. and we haven't she hasn't even done the really hard part that's coming yet technically but yep. the stuff she's gone through some of the pain i've seen her go through because of the drugs she's had to take and everything like that it's it's just a feeling of helplessness and that's another thing you were saying about what would my advice is what the minute I turned from saying sorry, which is from that helplessness, that's where it comes from, um, to saying thank you, is just showing that she knew I was, you know, was thankful for her, but I don't think I was putting it out there, and I, and I, I kind of regret that. I, 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 we probably never talked about this, babe, but I feel like I didn't say thank you enough at the beginning, and without her going through all this, this just wouldn't have, have happened. Right. It wouldn't have happened. You, you know? can't feel guilty about that, though, man. You, no, you, no, you I, no, know, you know, it, I don't now. I definitely don't anymore. For you know, uh, it just makes her more special. Makes yeah, the right. it makes Olivia more special, and it makes our baby way more special. In my for me, and I know everyone's kids are the perfect kid, and well, but they're, they're, they're uh, <laughs> mine are pretty close, but they ain't perfect. Nope. No, 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 nope. she's not going to be either. I know that. Nope. Um, but it's just it it just elevates the love that we've already got for this child. That we never thought we were going to have. I never thought we were going to have. There was a period I was like, this isn't going to work. I'm, I'm kind of cut from the same cloth. I Years, years and years and years. By the way, my first kid, 35. Wow. I was 35 years old. So basically, like I said, same age. Um, we went through uh, years and years where I thought I was shooting blanks. But I, I never looked into it because it was never really with a serious relationship. And it finally just got older and older and thought this was just the way it was. And then the lady came out one morning and said, I'm pregnant. Said, yeah. It's like, who are you sleeping with? Because that's definitely not <laughs> yeah. mine. Yeah. And anyway, blah, 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 long story. We got, you know, I checked it out and there <laughs> we're having a kid. Well, this is the thing. This and is I'm the so thing. glad it happened later in life. Yeah, for sure. No, no, yeah. no doubt. And this is the thing with all the like, they're going to get tested. This is where we as men, we, we come up with. You know, different ways of saying things like shooting blanks and stuff like that, which is in our vernacular. It's, it's yep. exactly it. But we try to manly it up. Yes. yes, yes. Without the use of the correct term. But it's like, now I've done it a bunch of times. Like the first time, shout out Quest Diagnostics. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because I forgot my headphones the first time I did it. And I don't know if any of you masturbate without any headphones <laughs> and no sound. It's, it's not fun. I've never fun. used headphones in my now, life. The funny thing I, is... I'm, Trying to figure out what the purpose is. The worst thing is, in that place, it's it's a medical center. So it's not a fertility center. There's people going into different rooms to get tested for whatever they're getting tested for. So I'm in this big room, and and I don't have my headphones. So I've got the, the volume on 5%, <laughs> trying to watch the scene prior to the sex to work out what's going on. You know, I know. Uh, right. Of course, I understand. Because yeah. the story is important. Um, <laughs> But you can hear people, you know, on Zimmer frames and people with broken leg and people outside, people knocking the door and you're, you're trying to knock one out. And yeah. it's like, <laughs> I, it's, it's, you know, and I will say, and I'm really open now, I've worked out that it's something I, I'm okay to, to tear myself down a bit over it. It's like, I have some problems with my body. I, if I can be blunt, I don't come very much. I don't c- create that much of a volume of sperm. I only realized that when I was testing it, right. and it's in a cup, and it's like a shot of ketchup that they give you to test. Right. At a, you know, if, if they give you that at a restaurant, you send it back and go give me more. It's not enough. You know, I'm like, oh man, that's, <laughs> God, that's embarrassing. I was so embarrassed. Yeah. I was like, is yeah, that yeah. it? Is that all I got? This is good content, right? Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I was like, teacher, oh, yeah, I do? teacher, I how's it right? going, buddy? You're hitting all the right notes right now. Part of part. <laughs> Have you picked a name out? Have yeah. you picked a name out for your daughter? Are you willing to share that? No, not yet. Okay. Yeah, I did. Well, I'm no, going to make I'm one up for story's sake. Sure. 
Susie, that's your dad right there. It won't be Susie because yeah. he's one of my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I think it's, it's like, I was joking. You know, I said the other night, I really want to, like, I, I'm going to try. I don't should probably shouldn't put it out, but I really want to go to an open mic and talk about this stuff as right. therapy. It's why I'm enjoying doing this. Yeah. Because it's like, looking back on it, some of it's really funny. Right. Like just doing that and going, how many people, how many guys have sat where I am? How much, how many loads have been shot in this room over the years? And <laughs> what's, this, what's the search history of this computer that I'm on? And you're like, what else are there other people into? Oh, no, hang on, I got to do something. Like, never mind the gills that they're into. I need to concentrate on what I like. And, and you're like, what do I like? And it's just <laughs> so much going through your head. And you start going, like, right, stop. Like, and, and they, they do have an option that you can do it at home, but you've got to be there within 30 minutes. And I'd be like, no, in my luck, I'd go home and you can have sex and do it, but you just have to pull out and, and have the cup. Uh -huh. And it's like, that sounds awesome. And then you... <laughs> and I was like, well, that's... And, and, I, and I, you know, we, when we were doing... We, we tried, it was like... <laughs> my wife's so funny. She went, well, why don't we get a cup and just try it? I was like, babe, I'm not having sex with you and having a cup. So I'm not doing it. I'm not doing that. It's like, too far for me. <laughs> I'll just be looking at the cup. The dogs are sitting over there anyway. I can't be doing that. There's a lot going on. Um, so, I, you know, I, I didn't want to go home. I was like, there'll be a crash on the 215 and I'm going to be stuck in traffic and this was a waste of time. Yeah. I was like, Literally. I'll, just, I'll just do it there. I'll just do it there. I'll, I'll concentrate. I'll be better. But it's it, that whole process, and looking back on it, is, is pretty amusing now. It certainly wasn't at the time. But I just think ultimately to people, who guys who have to do it, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Whatever the yeah. outcome is, you will be okay. And I know that's awful foreshadowing, but it's just like you will be, you will get through it because you've got support networks around you. If it doesn't work out, there are options like adoption. You know, there are things you can do right. that are, they are 100% your children. You're the, you're the father of that baby. You're the mother of that baby. Um, and it's just, you know, we were watching, uh, you know, Friends is one of those shows that we'd have on in the background in our house. And it was just, I don't know if you ever watched it, but it was Monica oh, and my Chandler have show. gone through. Yeah. And it's just happened to be on that season when we've been, I've been like going through my notes to come on here. And the way they talk about it, particularly him going to get tested, is that embarrassing? This is embarrassing. Why have they given me the child size cup? All this right, kind of right, stuff. Yeah. And it's like, 10, that's why. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they, we need to change the narrative on, on for men. I yeah. mean, I, you know, I, I, I can only speak about it as much as I can and hope that people take notice. And I have had a few guys who've reached out and gone, I feel like I should go and get tested. I don't really know them. I'm, well, do it and call me. There's, yeah. my, there's my number. Take my number. I'm available whenever you want. You know what I love is that you reached out. You reached out and wanted to, to reach other people who might be going through the same thing you just went through. Yeah. Which was really great. You did that on your own. You it, didn't, it wasn't something that somebody asked. We didn't ask you to come on the podcast. You reached out yeah. and wanted to be on. And it just so happened to be yeah. with the my line. guys. Yeah, yeah. And, and here we are sitting on this show now it, together. It, it, it was a, a two-hander. I want people to know how complicated it was is. Was it a two-hander? Yeah. I'm <laughs> just oh, curious. Thing. Like, yeah. whoa, bro. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could say it was. <laughs> It's got a freckle on it. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Too much? Um, I know, hey, something weird. I know well the, teach, well the teacher has well a podcast, and I know he's going he's gonna to kick a into one of these the two-handers. When, when, oh, when am I coming on? Oh, uh, we can talk about two-handers. On the podcast, not you, mate. Not you. <laughs> yeah, not coming on you. I mean your podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can save that for after. the, Off behind, the rails. Behind the sticky... Because it's called a sticky oh. podcast. We can get into details. I got, I got some fun shit that happened. You know. Oh, this has been plenty right here. Behind okay, the we got sticky. a lot of ammo. Oh, I got more. Behind so the it's sticky. Like that room that he's talking about. I know, huh? Wow. All right. Can I? Uh, can I? Can I interject real quick? Yeah, I, please. I, I, I feel like I've taken more of your show today than it's oh, your dude, show. Oh, dude. This this was about my boy here. Die. And, yeah. Thank you for sharing your story, oh, man. My pleasure. That was amazing um, for listening. I, I cannot wait to have you solo. Uh, with Nick, because that dynamic's just going to be, I mean, I, that's going to be the day I'm just going to sit back and, and watch. And, you know, and it, watch. it's been fun to discuss with people who have been through it, the, the small people I've done. It, it's yeah. interesting how many people have gone through it. Anyway, kind of. But you, you two will, I mean, it's going to be great. So thank you for no, sharing that. Nick, um, we miss you. We love you, dude. Uh, 
Just get better. Yeah, man. Come yes, on. Yes, sir. Come on. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Jesse Dugas. Now, I'm going to hand the baton over to Brian Hopkins because we can talk about you being a dad on another episode solo. He does the Hero's Journey podcast. And whether you think so or not, man, you have recently gone through something and are currently still going through that. That can be considered very heroic, if you ask me, Brian. Well, ask him. I'm going to. I'm setting it up. Please. So you can knock that son bitch down. Oh, okay. Okay? He's been gone a weight loss journey. And I'm going to leave it at that. I have given you the info, Brian. It, the conch is yours. Jesse, please. It, 103 pounds, nine months. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, buddy. So it's a... Uh, Okay. Well, Vegas, I might have put a pound or two back on. That's yeah. my fault, and I apologize. I have all this free food, and I keep stuffing it in his face. But so, wh- one reason why, and then a couple different. How reasons. did it happen? It's uh, so another another subject. Oh, spilling water here. Almost. Um, that's touchy. But I uh, I had gastric bypass surgery done, uh, vertical sleeve, and so what that is is they uh, they go in six incisions, and they your stomach's a D. They remove the D, leaving oh. that cylinder. So I can uh, I can hold about eight ounces of food at a time. Oh wow! High protein. I don't count calories. I don't count carbs. I monitor what I eat protein wise. It's pretty much 100% protein all the time. Um, and I did it for a couple different reasons. I was an uncontrolled type two diabetic. I was morbidly obese. I had high cholesterol. I was uh, I was borderline insulin dependent. Um, and then I've got two young kids with two grown, somewhat grown kids. So I. Uh, you know, for me, being around and taking care of my family is what's most important for me. Good and for so you. it's, uh, you know, I've got a 20, 20 year old that turns 21 that's, uh, that works intelligence for the Army in Baltimore. Oh, he's, he's, shake he's, his hand for me, please. Will do. He's, uh, he's the one that you, know, you, I, you keep referring to. He's, uh, I adopted him when he was three. Um, he is biologically my wife's, but I'm the only dad he's ever known. Reyes, I know you'll be watching this. I love you, buddy. Um, so he's my oldest. Then I've got Zach, who's a 15 year old. And then, uh, I've got Jace who we thought was going to be a girl until he was delivered as a boy. Oh, wow. Ultrasounds and everything said girl. So we had everything set up for pink. And then he's, uh, (laughs) he's four. And then I've got a two year old little girl. So I've got three boys and a girl. So you're telling you, man, with your journey and having a little girl, you ain't gonna want to let go. I know, no, I and know that. So, but it's a, uh, but for me, it was getting healthy, and so it's a. Uh, Can I but, ask what was yeah. the weight that you came down from? So three thirty six. Oh wow! Whoa! Yeah, good for you, man. Yeah, and it's uh, you know I played baseball collegiately. I played at uh, I was six one, uh, two twenty five when I played. I've lost a little over an inch um, with some back issues, but one I did it just to get off all the meds, get healthier. I've kicked diabetes, I'm no longer a diabetic. Uh, kicked good the, for you. Yeah, wow. kicked the cholesterol. I'm off everything. Uh, the only thing I take now is multivitamins. Um, all in December 9th was what I consider my new birthday. So, you know, October 23rd is my actual birthday, but December 9th is when I had surgery and just haven't looked back. Need to be here as long as possible. That's amazing. That was the right way to do it. Good for you. So. I have a friend. She went through that. Um, she went to Mexico and had this done and came back, and I think she's down like 60 pounds it's right now. Um, she looks a lot healthier. Her skin looks better. Um, I'm just so happy for her. And I, when I see her, she's got vegetables and she's doing all the right things. I'm like, you are, that's, you know, you were an inspiration, you know? So it's same with you, man. That's really cool. It's definitely a tool, you know, similar to the way people are approaching you. I get approached. So I wasn't shy about it. It's, uh, you know, I post on social media that I had it done, posted selfies on Facebook wasn't shy about it at all. A lot of people, you know, they feel like, and I, I felt like a failure, man. I couldn't do it with the diet. I've got mm-hmm. a ruptured L5S1 in my lower back that I had surgery on. It re, I was too heavy. I was yeah. fat. And it re-ruptured six months after I had it fixed the first time. And so I was told at that point, man, you got to get the weight off before we can, we can fix you, whether it's going to be fusing your back or whether it's going to be an artificial disc. But if you want that artificial disc and you want to stay mobile, I was playing competitive softball at the time, even at heavy, I was playing a hundred competitive softball mm-hmm. games a year. And so it's, uh, I was told that I needed to get the weight off and I tried, man, I tried the diet and I just, I couldn't exercise because my back wouldn't allow me to. And it's, uh, it was just one of those situations where, you know, I, I felt like a failure early on. I felt like I was taking the cheap and easy way out and, 
it wasn't until I realized that, man, it's a tool. You still got to do all the right stuff. You still got to eat right. You still got to figure out a way to get your cardio yeah. in. You've still got to do the other parts, and, and it has to be has to be a lifetime change. So many people fail because they think it's a fix all, right? And so, but you know, similar situation. I I've probably had two to three hundred conversations since December with people that, hey, thank you for being up front. Would you go through? I had mine done here in the states. Okay. Uh, to get it done here in the states, it's difficult. It was a two year process. Wow. Two yeah. psych evals. The whole nine yards. Two years. How do you feel years. now? Like how incredible. Do you phys- yeah, incredible. yeah. Your back and everything is it? So back, you know, I, I almost went on the uh, <laughs> almost yes. went on the roller coaster over at the uh, the New York, New York. It's uh back is better. I haven't felt my left leg lo- below my knee in the last five years. Wow. But in the last six months, it's from my hip to my knee, and it was the entire leg. Okay. And so nerves so coming re- back. It's coming back. Was there like a financial burden? That also prior to all, you know all the all the surgeries you had was there, was that in in your mind too? It's like I'm gonna keep spending money on this, trying no. to fix things. Now it wasn't an issue. It was just no, it wasn't an issue for me. It's I ask because coming from a country where everything's majoritively free, really, like because <sighs> you know it's it's like the healthcare system. It's like you know it adds up. So you know I'm, unless you've got amazing insurance, which no, right? not definitely not the case. But for uh for me, I mean the financial end, and you know it's not rich by any means. I mean, I'm a sole proprietor. Do you have an LCC? It's me. And I just hired my first employee. So I've got me plus oh, one. Congrats. Good and for you, uh, man. You know, and doing the, the social media marketing thing and the website, and, you know, that's another story, but it's uh, not rich by any means. But when it comes to health, there's, I mean, I'll go in debt. Yeah. You know, it's for sure. It's health is what it's about. Absolutely. Good for you. So. You know, uh, the teacher sitting back there, he's part of um, the fitness junkies, correct? Absolutely. I, I see you on there quite a bit talking about health and you've, you've lost weight in. Yeah, no, I, uh, I actually had my father, he had gastric bypass surgery. Wasn't so successful because like you said, it's just a tool. Uh, so like a lot of people fail to recognize the, the discipline and the daily habits that really go behind it. Sadly, my dad, uh, kind of crazy. He, got internal bleeding right after the surgery because the incisions weren't like fully sewed up. So he actually almost ended up dying because Whoa. of that surgery. Wow. He took so, septic pretty quick. Yes. Yeah. No, definitely. Wow. So did did ever did your doctor ever bring that up like as everything was happening? Because you said it was a two year process. Yeah. How intensive was it when you were being told the bad stuff? Like what could go wrong? It was intensive. Uh, there are a couple different surgeries. So the uh, the one that I had had was the the easier of the two as far as recovery. I mean, it hurt like a bitch when it was done. But they have the R and Y where they're they're repiping your organs and they're deleting your stomach. And that one, whoa, that one is a rough one. Um, the one that I had done the vertical sleeve. You know, I, I don't remember. I think the count was I had three hundred and three hundred and fifty staples or something internally. Wow. And it's uh you know they're they're there forever. But yeah they. They do a test right after it's uh, for me. I don't know if that's the way they do it in Mexico, but the way I had it done in Eugene, Oregon, where I had mine done in Springfield, um, they take you down, they stand you in front of this machine that, that scans you, and you got to swallow the nastiest tasting stuff that you can. And mind you, this is 12 hours after surgery where I was full off of less than an ounce of fluid. Less mm. than an ounce of fluid, I felt like I was puking sick full. Wow. And wow. so, because th- there's nothing there. You have uh-huh. to restretch out. Yeah. And so they're making you swallow two to three ounces and you can barely swallow. And it's just this dye. And that's exactly what they're looking for, though, is they're looking for that leak. Got and you. they won't release you from the hospital if you're leaking. So. I'm sorry about your dad there. Mm. Oh, How's yeah. All good. No, no. Now he's a, he's a bill of health. For, I mean, he's, he's had a couple of like, uh, you know, strokes and stuff. And, but everything health wise uh, that I've learned has kind of been off of his mistakes. So, but we're, we're leading a, a better lifestyle now, thankfully. Good. Yeah. Thankfully. Well, you know, <clears throat> I see that in you every time I walk in here, dude. So I applaud you Thank as well. You. Um, that's that's a, an amazing story. And uh, now I know two people, two people have gone through it. And, um, you know, my girl, she went to school at four years in nutrition. I, I call her a professional student because the first <laughs> four and a half, she got a psych degree and then she went back to school and then got a nutrition degree to help people like yourself um because she worked at the hospital while she was going you know going to school and um 
and just wanted to help. Um, but now she's in a whole different field and she's saving people's lives in, uh, in ORs rooms where they're burning out cancer lesions. And um, so every time she gets a call, she has to leave, you know, like she lives in the Bay half the time. When she's gone, or, or like, I got a case today, I'm like, go save that, go save that life, you know, uh, go do that. It means so much to me. I'm so proud of her. That's why I'm sitting here talking about it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really cool thing. You know, this, this getting to sit around and, and share our stories hopefully can inspire and, and reach someone sitting at home. Um, it's important that we do share our stories. It's important. Like I said, when I put a jacket on, you know, I'm born, I was born with a, with a defect. You know, I, I have Poland syndrome, something that I could have had web fingers and toes. I'm born with that left chest muscle and part of my bicep. You know, these are my insecurities. Mm -hmm. These are the things that, you know, but I still stand on front of the, you know, on a stage in front of yeah. tons of people and, and go, hey, basically I'm standing here naked going, sharing my soul with everyone. And, you know, it's just my way of overcoming these things and sitting and sharing our stories together today. I want to thank you guys for doing that. Thank you for having us. You know, Absolutely. In, thank you. Inclu including you back there. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Mr. Thank you. Mr. I have a fantastic voice uh, as well. Yes. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Are you I've talking about me, JP? Yeah. yeah. This is no. just a group of just really good speakers into the mic. Let me tell you. <laughs> we, we got a good group here today. Well, Did you need you. to use too many subtitles for me or was it okay? <laughs> Oh, it's going to be rough. We're going to read the <laughs> captions. are going to be rough. That, that is, I love it. It's going to be rough. There's a 45-minute stretch where, right. where we didn't talk at all, all subtitled. Great. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, yeah, hopefully it made and, sense. And, 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 yeah. and amazing, by the way. Let me tell you, from coming from a guy who does a podcast, I'll make it quick. Guests like you, huh, man, you're a, a, a diamond in the rough. Oh, good. Yeah. Because the less amount of time I need to speak or ask questions, um, it actually is better. Most yeah, of the for time. sure. But for you're sure. very so, passionate yeah. about it, and yeah, and, and it's hard. Not, it's hard not to be. When exactly. You're I can't yeah. wait to. I cannot. I'm going to follow you up. I'm going to get your number, and I cannot wait for the next in two months, man. Right? Less than two months. September 27. Oh yeah. man, she better be it cute. Is, God, I hope she's it, it cute. Don't matter. My my little girl, who's gorgeous, <sighs> she will be. <laughs> she she came out looking like a small purple Chinese girl. <laughs> Not so, red hair. And, and, okay. No, and she's she's <laughs> absolutely now she's freckles and beautiful and just perfect. So don't nah. you worry. No, you know, not, she, no, if she comes out looking like a, you know an alien, it's okay. Oh, I'm sure give, she will. That's week. fine. I'm all about it. So, I want to say thank you to you guys. Uh, the teacher George back there. Thank, thank you again you today. Um, Jesse, yep, my friend. I want to shake your hand, man. Thank you. Uh, you know, I I said I wanted to learn about you on the air, and here we are. You just blew me away. So thank you for sharing that story. I hope Thanks your journey yeah. continues to go in the right direction for you. I hope the next time I talk to you, you can feel that foot. Yeah, me too. You know, that'd yes. be amazing. Um, oh, I'm go sorry. Ahead. No, 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 no. I actually had, there's one thing I wanted to ask Di before we yeah. finished up. Can you do an American accent? Um, I mean, the easiest one for us to do. No, not that one. Um, <laughs> it's, it's easy to go Southern for, for British people. Okay, let's hear it. Well, it just kind of sounds offensive when I do it now. Well, I can talk like you then, if you like. Because I did oh, it that yesterday. Was that, they all... <laughs> no, if you want me to go Scottish, I can do it. <laughs> but I'm not Scottish. But I'm mate. not I'm Scottish. I, uh, I don't know the difference now in my You know, Tom Jones. Tom Jones is where I'm from, see? Because okay. he sounds like God. If there's a God, there's, that's Tom Jones. He talks like that. Okay. <laughs> women's, women's clothes fall off when Tom Jones <laughs> talks. <laughs> Never mind when he sings. Um... Yeah, I used to be very good at accents. I haven't done American ones since I've moved here on purpose because it's like, oh, no, they're nowhere near as good as they should be. Um, <laughs> oh, man. That's what I've seen. I just did a terrible one, so I would like to judge yours. Y'all need to shut up, all right? Y'all need to <laughs> let it go. I'm not going to do it. And, uh, and that's that. So. Texas teenage girl. <laughs> yeah, no, the, other, the other easy one is obviously, oh, my God, it's a valley girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're going to Vegas. Vegas doesn't know. I can't wait to meet the teacher. He's so fit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at his arms. Uh -huh. yeah, that. Boom. Oh, Thank wow. you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, I do appreciate that. So, Di, yes, thank sir. you so much, You're man. Thank you for um, having me. Yeah, appreciate thank it. you. Uh, the uh, original chaos. Yes, your yeah. band. You got a new music coming out. Yeah, we got a single coming out soon. We got a we we play all across town um, in many different venues. So just find us at Original Chaos LV. I'd, I'd appreciate on Facebook and Instagram. There you go, and my boy, JP. 
Thank yes, you, sir. man. This oh, thank is, you. This is number two in this room. I didn't want to say anything, but am I the first person to be the second one time Yes, on? you are. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> so go the, check out DadCast. And the t-shirt. I know. I know. Chuck Norris. Yeah. DadCast.co. Uh-huh. Check us out on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast, man. They're, they're there. And uh, this one will be a collaboration up on both Heroes Journey podcast and DadCast as well. Um, again, I think we're going to drop this one same time. So yeah. obviously we'll talk about that off the air and figure out what that day happens. But man, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And I can't wait to have... Well, Jesse... We, I see you every day, my producer guy behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. But I, again, cannot wait Thank you. No, I to talk it. And, and meet that baby girl of yours, me man. Me too. It's going to be it. the greatest day of your life. I can't wait. Trust me. Can't wait. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, so out there, guys, I want to say again, thank you to SMP Inc., who brought you this episode right here in Las Vegas. And uh, to Sticky Paw Studios, thank you for giving me such a beautiful space and place. The crew here is amazing. Thank you, guys. I love you guys. And uh, hopefully what we talked about today inspired you just a little bit, helps you through your journey. And um, tell your friends about it. Go, go follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. And just know that I'm grateful to you. Thank you guys so much. Go find that world of new adventure. My name is Brian. This is a Hero's Journey podcast. Thank you. It's coming around, it's coming around to me